Hi, it's Rich from Planet PE and today we are going to have a look at a topic that I got requested on YouTube. So looking at the movements which are possible at a joint. Now this is a topic that we're going to see in paper one and we're going to see in pretty much every single paper. So stay tuned, it's one that you need to really, really make sure that you know all about. So the way to look at this is to think about the different types of joints and then the movements which are possible at those joints and then try and then use some sporting examples. So let's think about the hinge joints that we have in the body. So in the body, we've got two different hinge joints. We've got the elbow and we've got the knee, okay? The, it depends on your exam board, the ankle is also a hinge joint, particularly if you are an AQA student. So what we are looking at then is that in those hinge joints, there are certain movements that are possible and they are only possible in the hinge joint. And by that, I mean that the hinge joint can't actually do any of the types of movement. So if I think about my elbow, okay, my elbow can move into flexion and extension. It can't do anything else because of the shape of the joint. So the bones are restricting the movement here, so therefore they only allow it to go into flexion and into extension. Now what those terms actually mean is that the definition of flexion is that we reduce the angle of the joint. The definition of extension is that we increase the angle of the joint. So if we think about something like a tennis serve, a tennis serve is a good example where flexion and extension both occur. Now that's the type of thing that you've got to do in your exam. So in your exam to say, um, when does flexion and extension occur? If you just said the tennis serve, you probably wouldn't get any credit. So what you've got to try and talk about is when in the tennis serve flexion occurs and when in the tennis serve extension occurs. So if we were to take uh, the tennis serve as our example, so if I had a racket in my hand, if I'm in that position there, what you might call the preparation phase, the point before I hit the ball, my elbow is in flexion. As I then go to hit the ball, my elbow is now moved into extension. And that's the type of answer that you need. Same with the knee, the knee can only do flexion and extension. It's the only movements possible at that joint. So think about it this way. If you're going to bend your knee, that is in flexion, because as you'll see in the picture here, that we've got flexion at the knee. So as you are withdrawing the foot when you're kicking the ball, okay, that is flexion. As you then go to kick the ball, and then the knee becomes straightened or goes into extension, then obviously that is where extension occurs, okay, during the kicking or the striking of the football. Now, the ankle is a little bit different. So the ankle is a slightly, slightly odd one because in different exam boards, it's, it's different. So for AQA, the one that I teach, it is definitely a hinge joint. And at the ankle, it can do dorsiflexion and it can do plantar flexion. So plantar flexion is where you're gonna point your toes. So if you see any picture of, let's say, a netballer, as you might see in this exam question just here, that you'll see that the netballer goes into plantar flexion as they push up onto their toes. They are in dorsiflexion when they are first collecting the ball and maybe they're flat-footed. So we've got plantar flexion and we have dorsiflexion. So they're all the movements that a hinge joint can do. The next joint we are looking at is a ball and socket joint. Now these are in the hip and in the shoulder. So on my shoulder physically has a ball and then a socket which it moves around in. So that's why it's called a ball socket joint. Now these types of joints have a bit more movement. So they have actually the largest range of movement. So they can do flexion and extension, they can do abduction and adduction, and they can do rotation and circumduction. So again, some new words in there. So flexion and extension, we've still got exactly the same definitions. It's about the angle of the joint. So if we're thinking about flexion, at the ball and socket joint, the easiest way to think about it is it's moving forwards. So if my shoulder is moving forward, so my hand comes towards the camera, that is in flexion. If my arm is down by my side or even moving backwards, that is extension. So again, same with the hip. So you will see something like this again, if you have a look at the picture, you'll see that we've got a sprinter and it's asking you to talk about what position the hip is in. As you can see, the body is upright, the hip has moved forwards, so therefore it is in flexion. If the leg was straighter or actually behind the body, then we would term that as being extension. So that is flexion and extension. We've then got abduction and adduction. So abduction 
an adduction. So if you were abducted by aliens, then you'd be taken away by aliens. And that's kind of the terminology that you need to think about. If I've got this imaginary center line, so if I had a line going through the middle of my body, if my arm was to move away from that point, then that is abduction at the shoulder joint. If my arm moves back towards my body, that is adduction or adduction, I should say, of the shoulder joint. The hips are exactly the same. So if you think about way, if you were stepping or sidestepping out to the side, then the hip's gonna move away from that center line. So we've got abduction and we have adduction as well as flexion and extension. The final two are about rotation and about circumduction. So a couple of different ones. So if you just have a quick look at this video, you'll see somebody uh, bowling a cricket and we'll have a look at how circumduction might actually occur. For watching who are interested in leg spin or want to be leg spinners, that's the leg break. Spinning with the seam going from right to left down the pitch. Found the inside edge and then the top spinner with uh, the back of the hand facing the batsman when the balls let go and it found the outside edge. Flipper comes from underneath the hand. They do say that um, Warren doesn't have any new deliveries, that it's all in uh, the imagination. I assure you he has uh, a dozen so what you've just seen there is a cricketer using circumduction and rotation. So two different movements within the same movement, if that makes sense. So what we've got is we've got some rotation going on and some circumduction. So what circumduction is, is the point where as you see the cricketer, as they are coming around the joint to then try and move from that shoulder point. So what you might think of being rotation, this movement, this circular motion, is actually circumduction. And the way we define circumduction is that it's a turning or circular motion around the joint. So the fact that my movement is moving around the joint is circumduction. Now where rotation comes in is that you'll see the bowler actually adding spin. Okay, so this movement is going around the joint, around this kind of axis, so moving around the axis, this rotation. So there's some movement going on, some rotation, as well as circumduction, as well as this idea that we've put some spin on the ball by causing rotation. So we've got circumduction, rotation, adduction, abduction, flexion, and extension, which are all possible at a ball and socket joint. Now, the additional thing that you would need to know is that the muscles which are responsible for that. But again, that's a whole new topic. So as always, thank you for watching the video. Please make sure that you subscribe, you like the videos, you get on Instagram, but more importantly, you practice exam questions. So if you've not already done it, have a look at a website called Senenka Learning. It's very, very good. There's a little link in the description below. If you've not joined it yet, it's free. Okay, see you later.